So we've learned a lot about the internet and how it works. We've learned that the internet is made of routers and packets and hops and IP addresses and hopefully all of this stuff is starting to make a little bit of sense. But we've referred to the internet as a wire. So you can see here there's this wire that runs and goes on for infinite this way and infinite that way and, and it just takes you to the rest of the internet. Now this little branch right here branches off to our computer, our device, and it gives us the access to the internet. If we were to take this and break that, then all of a sudden we wouldn't have access to the internet anymore. And hey, now it's back as long as we're connected to that wire. So that's a way you can think about it. So out here on the rest of the internet would be all those routers that control how traffic flows and allows you to get to other computers on the internet. And, uh, and that goes both ways. But unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that because your computer does not connect directly to the main line of the internet. There are some things in the way. So we're gonna take a look at those things. First, we're gonna start with what's called the ISP. And the ISP stands for Internet Service Provider. And around here, some common internet service providers are Bell, Kojigo, and if you live in a rural area, maybe ExploreNet. And these companies are all companies that make money by providing people with access to the internet. So your internet service provider would have a pretty direct line to quote the main internet. Think of it that way. Uh, so when your computer turns on, you would connect, your computer would connect to the internet service provider. The internet service provider would give you an IP address and that would allow you to get online. So here's where the tricky part comes in. You probably have multiple devices at home that are connected to the internet. It could be laptops, desktops, phones, game consoles, and now there are even things like fridges and thermostats and cars that are connected to the internet. So the number of things that you have in your house connected to the internet is probably more than one. But the internet service provider is only going to give you one IP address. And we also know that no two devices on the internet can have the same IP address. So how's that going to work? If the, if the ISP is only going to give you one IP address for your whole household, how are all these devices going to get online? And the answer is a router. I'll stop it right there for now. So you have a router at home. If you have broadband, you have a router at home. Whether you know it or not, you do. And the router is kind of the main hub of your family or household internet. And the router's job is, is multiple. The router has a lot of different jobs. The router is what gets an IP address from the ISP. So the router is usually online all the time. And if it's not, what happens is it turns on. And when the router turns on, it's connected to the outside of your house. It's connected to the, the cable wiring or the phone line. And it connects directly to your internet service provider and says, hey, I need an IP address so that this family can get online. And the internet service provider responds and says, well, are they paying for it? And then as long as they're registered, then you get an IP address. So in this example here, the ISP has given the router this public IP address. I just noticed a little mistake. That should be the word public. So this here is the public IP address of the router. And what that means is that all internet traffic out here is allowed to know this address. But the thing about the router, the thing that makes it kind of amazing, is it has a public IP address that anyone on the internet can see, but it also has what we call a private IP address. So that's what makes a router different than all other devices that are part of this network. A router has two IP addresses. One of them is public, that is accessible to everyone on the internet. And one of them is private. And the private one is only accessible to all of the devices on a home network. So now you're seeing what's inside of this house. So we're gonna take this house as an example of a home network. And in this house, we have a smart TV, we have an iPhone, we have a laptop, we have a smart fridge, 
we have a PS4 and we have a Nest thermostat which connects to the internet. All of these things have to have IP addresses. But if you look closely, you'll notice that all of the IP addresses look very similar. They all start with 192, 168, 0, and it's only that last number that changes. So the fact that all of these devices have the same starting numbers in the IP address indicates that they're part of the same internal network, the same private network. And what that means is a computer or a device way out here on the internet is not allowed to access, say, the fridge unless the router allows it. So the router kind of acts as a bouncer or a guardian. It stands kind of between the, the ISP, the internet, and the private network, and it's going to try to protect you from bad things and people who are trying to hack into your system. Uh, so we call the router often a firewall because a firewall, a firewall is just a name for uh, a device that's going to stop bad people from hacking in. It's essentially uh, protection between you and the internet. So this device here, which I'm calling a router, I've heard it referred to as a number of things. It is a firewall, it is a gateway, because it is the gateway to the internet for all of these devices. Um, it's got lots of different names, because a router does so many different things for you. But essentially, the router's job is to direct traffic. So here's how this works. Let's say that you are working on this laptop right here. So your IP address at home, your internal address, is that. So if you were to request information, so if I'm sitting on my computer and I request information from my tennis site, what happens is I type livetennis.eu and the request goes to the router and the router says, oh, I guess this laptop would like to view a web page that's way out on the internet and it sends the request out on the internet and then it bounces off all the routers and it finds the server. The server responds and then the information is coming back and when the information comes back from live tennis, it needs to go to the router, so it knows to go to the public IP, and then the router says, oh, I remember who requested that information, and it passes it to the appropriate device based on its IP address. So the router is controlling all the traffic. It, control, it knows who or which device requested what information, and it can keep track of what to send where. If you're Snapchatting with a friend on your phone, it's going to know that it's going to send that request or that information out on the internet to your friend's device. And then when you get information back, it's not going to go to another device on your network. That wouldn't be good. It only is supposed to go to your device. So your router is keeping track of all of the network traffic on your device. It's making sure that everything goes to the right place and uh, making sure that, you know, nobody else is getting your information. So let's do one example of, of how this, we're going to go buy something. So I'm going to go and buy a new MacBook. So here we go. Paste. Hey, you just bought a MacBook. Okay. So I just bought a MacBook and I'm going to take it home. So I buy a MacBook from the store and I take it home to my house. So there we go. We just got a MacBook. Now the MacBook is off, so it doesn't have an IP address yet. But as soon as we turn it on, we want to go online. And so as soon as we turn it on, I'm just going to do a quick copy and paste here. Copy, paste. As soon as we turn it on, all of a sudden we get an IP address, magically. Well, that's not quite what happens. So what happens behind the scenes? As soon as we turn it on, it's not the address that gets copied. It's one of these little arrows here that I'm going to copy. And when I turn it on, all of a sudden the MacBook connects to the router and says, Hi, I am a new device on this network. Can I please have an IP address? And the router says, well, whoa, wait a minute. No, you can't unless you know the password. And that's where the Wi-Fi password comes in. I'm sure you've been to a friend's house or had friends over and they say, hey, I need your Wi-Fi password because I need to get online. That's what's happening. I'm adding a new device to the network and it needs to know that it's trusted. And so as soon as I type in the password, to the router, the router says, okay, I trust you now. And the router says, you can have this IP, but it changes this number so that it's unique. That last number there 
can be pretty much anything. So I'll put a, I don't know, let's put a 99. So I put a 99 there. And now this device has a unique IP address that can be used to identify it as part of the network. The only number I can't put there is one because one is reserved for the router. That's the gateway address because every device on my network knows that if it wants to send information out to the internet, it's got to send it to the router first and then the router will send it out. So just like that, I have an IP address. And that process that I just outlined is what we call DHCP, Dynamic Host Control Protocol. And don't let these letters scare you. All it means is that your new devices contact your router and your router randomly picks an IP address and gives it to the new machine or device as long as they know the password. And now this device can go freely about its business and it can you know, do what everything else is doing, access stuff online through the router. Okay. The important point to know is that <clears throat> the router is protecting us because I'm working on my MacBook here and I don't want everybody on the internet to know my private IP address. So when I say I would like information from the tennis site, the information goes to the router and the router says, no problem, I'll take care of that for you. And the router sends the request out on the internet, but the only IP address that people on the internet are going to know, machines on the internet are going to know, is this public IP. Okay, So they will know that and they will send the information, the tennis site will send information back to that address. And then it's the router's job to go, well, that information needs to go here. But the point is, the rest of the internet doesn't get to know my private IP. The only devices that can determine my private IP address are the devices on the network. And that's important because I want, you know, I might want my PS4 to talk to my smart TV, right? Maybe I want to wirelessly stream um, information from my PS4 to the TV. And that's easy because all has to happen is this. Uh, information from this would go to the router and the router says, oh, it's right there and it passes it back and forth. So these devices can all talk to each other pretty freely, the ones inside the network, whereas everything outside the network and the rest of the internet, a little harder. It has to go through the router. It's got to go take some time. And the other thing that happens all the time <clears throat> and you don't know about it is your router is protecting you from, well, bad things. So the rest of the internet can knock on the door as much as it wants. The rest of the internet, there could be hackers out there, there could be scammers out there, bad people always trying to request things. But your router sits there and goes, hey, did anybody request any information from you know this site? And if the answer is no, 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 the router says, no, get out of here, I'm not letting you in. Okay, so only information that is requested from out here actually gets past the router. So the router really does protect you working as what we call a firewall. And you can think of that firewall as like a bouncer. Okay. Um, just quickly, when I did a little search on private IP addresses, because you might be wondering, why is it 192.168.0? 192.168.0. Well, the people who made the internet and internet devices and IPs they said, okay, private addresses that are going to be used for homes and offices are always going to start with these. And so um, private IP addresses for our cases are, are always going to start with 10.0 or 172.16. I think what we'll do for this course, because remember, this is not a, an advanced networking course, this is an intro, is we'll think of it this way. Public IP addresses are always going to start with 192.168. Okay. And just one last thing I want to show you before we sign off here. I'm going to launch the terminal window again. And I did this in one of the other videos. When I launch the terminal window, it allows me to see some very basic information about my computer, some kind of low down hidden information. If I type IF config, you see all this stuff comes up, but the one I wanted to show you as I go a little higher 
There we go. See that right there? 192.168.2.12. That is my private IP address on my computer. Okay, so that is the IP address that my computer has on my private network sitting here in my house. However, when I go back here and I type what's my IP, you can see right there, it says my public IP is this. So this right here, what you're seeing, remember what I said, the rest of the internet only gets to see my public IP? That right there would be the equivalent of this right here. And I should have mentioned, sorry, these numbers that I've made up, they're just examples. So the public IP of the router in my house right now that I've proven is that. So if you wanted to find me online, you could find my router by typing that in. You wouldn't get much, but go ahead and try it if you like. Um, you're not going to see anything because I have not set up a web server, right? But that is my public IP. However, my private IP of my personal computer that's right in front of me is that. And the IP of the phone that's sitting next to me might be 192.168.2.14 or something like that. So I'm kind of proving that all this stuff actually works and works the way we expect it to. Okay, so hopefully that explains the basics of how a home network is set up, how a router is so important in um, defining your network, giving everything access to the internet, protecting you. A router does an awful lot. And later, we're going to talk a little bit more about how exactly you secure a network a little bit better because cybersecurity and network safety is an entire topic unto itself, which is growing all the time due to the rise in cybercrime. Okay? So there you go. I hope that uh, explained a lot. And uh, if you have any questions, you know what to do.